Tyson. I didn't see that coming. Good afternoon from Maryland Stadium in College Park. I'm Wayne Viner. That's intern Mason. Maryland gets pushed all over the place and goes down 35-14 to the Temple Owls. What did you see out there today? Not a lot that I liked. Uh, couldn't do anything. Couldn't do much. Missed a lot of open receivers. Eventually, though, they just had to run the ball straight at Temple, and they just never went to it. They did. At the very end, Maryland trying to mount a drive down 28-14. Suddenly, Anthony McFarlane, the running game, picked up, and that drive ended, unfortunately, as Kasim Hill threw an interception to his left, returned the distance for a touchdown, and that gets us to 35-14. Bruce is away from the microphone today. Probably a good day to be away from the microphone. Maryland got pushed all over the place by a team that was 0-2. You said to watch out for them because they started last year poorly, being Temple, and picked up. Temple's run game had Maryland going backwards. What'd you see there? Uh, same that we saw last year. A lot of not having the right interior linemen to be able to stop the straight up run. And it really showed a lot. And next week, you're going to play a team that loves to run the ball straight at you and you're going to be tested. Minnesota comes in next week. First Big Ten game. It'll be here 12 o'clock BTN again. Whew. Just uh, you know, really thought that as usual, thought Maryland was going to win. Uh, the concert starting up behind us, the post game band concert. You see the Temple guys, they're very happy. This post game is brought to you by Meyer Consulting Engineers of Rockville along with Viner Fourgates. We'll be back to talk some stats and maybe have a special guest after this commercial. <laughs> Meyer Consulting Engineers. In the past five years, our organization has completed over 1,300 projects in the U.S. and abroad, including many structures at the University of Maryland. For structural engineering and materials testing and inspection, call Meyer Consulting Engineers. Luke Jackson, now an editor with Pressbox, steps in. I'm Wayne Viner, Mason the intern. Luke, that was a tough one today. What did you see? Well, right away, I saw that they really missed their key cogs along the offensive line. They couldn't block today, whether it was for Kasim Hill, Tyrell Pigram, or, or, or a running back until late with uh, Anthony McFarlane. Uh, they were missing uh, Derwin Gray on the left side. They were missing Damian Prince on the right side. And they've been without uh, uh, Terrence Davis Terrence from DeMatha all, uh, all year. And they, they really missed those guys. They just couldn't block. And that seemed to really get the game started in the wrong direction. And then they also got beat up front on the defensive end as well. They really got beat at the point of attack today. Uh, Temple just seemed like they blew them off the ball sometimes. Temple seemed like the Big Ten teams right. we've seen before. Right. One thing I brought up while we were walking around on the concourse going, I can't believe this is for the first few games, Maryland's offense kept the defense off the field. Today, Maryland's offense was three and out so many times, and the defense had to do all of it. And for that, not so bad. The defense really scored twice. Savage has the interception for a touchdown. As soon as they put Annabottom in the middle, Mason and I looked at each other and went, hey, look at that. And he said, maybe they'll block this punt. They blocked it. Maryland had a chance to get back in late. Just didn't happen. Mason, what did you think of uh, Anthony McFarland late? I thought that that's the kind of jump that they needed. He was really, for me today, the only back that had a really strong first step, and that's kind of what changed up the running game. They also ran him straight up the middle as opposed to side to side. Right, right. What would you think? Well, I thought, uh, thank you, Temple. Well, we'll listen to the Temple band for a second. They're not going to stop. <laughs> no, they're not. Well, hopefully these mics carry over. I thought that Ty Johnson didn't take advantage of some of the upcuts. A lot of the runs pushed way to the sideline before the back cut up the field. Really thought they should have tried a couple more runs where they stayed on track up the middle. Everything, it seemed, went wide, even that jet sweep to a Conquo, and the jet sweep was missing today. 
Tyon Fleet Davis didn't have the ball much. Uh, McFarland didn't get the ball much till the end. I might have missed Lolo a little bit. Right, I absolutely agree with that. So, On the passing game side, we never really got set. We're able to deliver the ball. So a lot of these plays are off time, and I think that a lot of the intended receivers being freshmen, they just weren't ready for as physical as Temple was. Temple looked really fast. Right. Uh, Temple had a lot more energy today. They played faster. They were more physical than Maryland. And you mentioned Kasim. He didn't play very well today. And it just seemed like he was off his spot a lot early, uh, driven off his spot by Temple because there, the protection wasn't great. And it just seemed that carried over into the rest of the game. Sometimes you'll see that with young quarterbacks where they get driven off their spot early and they never get within the flow of the game. They never get into the he, flow. He never, and it just never seemed he got into a rhythm. And that interception he threw – on this side of the field, yep. that was his first interception of his college career. That was a bad, bad throw. And that could have been his second or third interception of the day. Yes. He had had a couple more like that He's early in the game. Flat out dropped. Uh, but the interception, he st stared down his guy. Right. Easy pick six. And yeah. it just he just didn't play very well today. Did not. And he didn't get a lot of help from his offensive line okay. either. But it just no one played particularly well today. Nope. The uh, best player for Maryland today? I'm going to have to go with Jesse Annie Bodum. Or Darnell Savage, the two guys that ended up in the end zone. Right. I think McFarlane looked really good, but there weren't There's a lot three. of standouts. Yeah. There's three. So I got a lot of overreaction on Twitter, a lot of overreaction on text at the moment. Is this a bad game or a bad team, or is it too early to tell, Mason? I think it all depends on the line, the offensive line. If they don't bring these three guys back, they're a bad team. I 100% I agree. They have to get their bookend tackles back. They've got right. to get Prince We're back. We're about to get run over by the Gatorade truck. The band's going. We have a press conference to get to. Uh, this is Wayne Viner. That's Luke Jackson. And this has been intern Mason. We're going to go into the press conference. Luke, thanks for checking in. No problem. Thanks for having me. Go Terps.